What is going on, everyone? Welcome into Big Time Football Talk. Today, I want to break down the North Carolina Tar Heels football team heading into the 2020 season. So it was huge last year. They brought back Mac Brown, a college football icon, a former national uh, title winner, title winning coach at Texas, led Vince Young and the Texas Longhorns over the, to the historic upset of the USC Trojans back in 2005. So Mac Brown comes to return a uh, Carolina team to uh, back to some uh, success they had when he was there in the late 90s. Coached there from, when was it, 1988 to 1997. Then they became the Texas coach up until, I believe, was it 2014, 2015? Um, maybe it was 2013. It was between 2013 and 2015. Coach at Texas, great career. Almost won another national title in 09 at Texas, but was a phenomenal recruiter. Produced a lot of NFL players. Kind of the last time Texas was uh, really relevant again was uh, 09. They had that great year. Lost in the national title after Colt McCoy got hurt to Alabama. And then kind of was downhill the next year. They went 5-7. and seven, And then uh, Mac Brown, I think he got uh, stressed. I think the uh, pressure got too high on him, and he was uh, – just not dealing well with the expectations. He said it was the wins were a struggle, and then uh, the wins were kind of just like a like a relieve, and the losses were just uh, just really crippling for Mac Brown. So he took a few years off and was announcing games on ESPN. I think he was really enjoying that, but uh, got back into coaching and back at uh, North Carolina where he's coached before. So uh, and then this year they were seven and six. Started off with a win against South Carolina, huge game and a rivalry game. South Carolina, North Carolina has became uh, quite the rivalry game recently. And uh, so it was good to, for Mac Brown to start off. That was a uh, great football game and a uh, good way to kick off his uh, Carolina career, or, Carol- or a se- a second stint. And they beat Miami in week two and then uh, nearly upset Clemson after coming off a uh, – a heartbreaking loss to Appalachian State in a game that really got people attention because no one really gave North Carolina a shot in that game. They were a big underdog, and it was kind of just showed that with Mac Brown, with a great coach, and you get people on board, that North Carolina is a team that could be dangerous next year. You know, really got the national attention, even though just seven and six. Um, lost to Virginia Tech in overtime game. They were very competitive in North Virginia Tech's a very, still a very solid program under Justin Fuente. I don't think Fuente's really got them uh, where Virginia Tech fans want them. Um, they cut, they long for the days of Frank Beamer where he really had Virginia Tech relevant again. But <clears throat> it starts at the quarterback position. Sam Howell returns at quarterback. He's a guy on a lot of. Uh, has a potential to be a uh, NFL quarterback in the future. Just a tremendous arm. Throws a great deep ball. Really likes to throw to the uh, sideline. Um, 3,641 yards, 38 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. They also return Michael Carter at running back. A thousand yard rusher in three touchdowns. Really like the way Michael Carter hits the holes. He's a pretty explosive running back. Got some good speed. The offensive line was really impressive. Uh, great run blocking offensive line. Really uh, produced some big holes for Michael Carter to run through. Also have uh, Javante Williams, 933 yards, five touchdowns. He's more of a physical power runner, but uh, they really complement each other well, and having both of them back will be huge of the offensive line that's really shown the ability to run block uh, very well. They returned Daz Newsome at wide receiver. They like to get do some involved in end arounds also he can uh go get the deep ball so uh Newsom his versatility was uh huge and Mac Brown and the coaching staff really know how to use Newsom well so like what I saw out of Daz Newsom on film I think he's a guy that could uh could have the NFL potential in his future we'll see how he does next year well and uh Diami Brown, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, 1,034 yards, 12 touchdowns, another talented kid. So really shows how good uh, Howell is and that the receivers are good. You got a couple guys over 1,000 yards receiving and double-digit touchdowns for both. I mean, that really shows that you're getting offensive production and you're getting explosive plays on offense. That was one thing that was key for North Carolina. They were one of the tops in country as in explosive plays. I think they uh, – what was it they had what was the stat they had more as many plays above yeah many plays above 10 yards and anyone in the country which is incredible but yeah the excellent deep throws by uh, Sam Howell was key to that and uh, wide receivers getting separation so 
And uh, what was key for North Carolina is they uh, had a low percentage of turnover rates, just turned the ball over on only 7% of their offensive possessions, what was really huge for Carolina. Um, and, yeah, here's the stat. They also produced 240 plays of 10 yards or more. That was 10th best in the country. I believe it was second best in the ACC just behind Clemson. Returned four starters on the offensive line. I think it's a left tackle. They lose the left tackle. Um, you know, like I said, the offensive line, very impressive. And uh, next year they'll have some, some definitely some continuity with a chance to improve, give How- Sam Howell some more time, give the receivers more time to separate and uh, create gaping holes for the uh, complement of running backs. So yeah, 10 starters back overall for North Carolina, which is just critical to a uh, team that is on the rise and is uh, building momentum. On uh, defense, it starts with Chaz Surratt, the middle linebacker. Chaz Surratt, a fantastic player. Literally like what he does. He's a guy that I really see as an NFL linebacker. Sideline to sideline, a former quarterback, one of the top players coming out of North Carolina back in the day. Um, he uh, yeah moved to quarterback. It wasn't uh, They knew Sam Howell was going to be the guy, and this year he's all ACC, six and a half sacks, 11 tackles for loss. Can't really say enough about Chaz Surratt. Having him back is just critical. He's a, a guy that they want to be a leader on their defense and um, also add an interception. But uh, Chaz Surratt, the uh, sky really is the limit for this kid. Very, very talented, very talented young man. It'll be interesting to see how he does next year and can he even improve on an out, outstanding uh, redshirt junior year. And they also have experience in the uh, secondary. Patrice Wren uh, was injured game two, but they had some other guys step up like Storm Duck and um, who else? Yeah, had some had some young guys step up in the secondary. Secondary was one of their weaknesses along the defensive line. Um, needs to be improved, too. They do lose Jason Strobridge, number 55. He was a very talented player on the D-line. So they'll need some guys to uh, step it up, step up their play in the secondary and defensive line. So... But, I mean, still a lot of talent returning. They return their other two linebackers. So um, the defense uh, should be pretty solid. It's a pretty tough schedule this year. They open up at UCF week one, which is going to be a tough game. UCF, not the program they were since Scott Frost took over, but very still loaded with talent. They've recruited well um, prior to Scott Frost leaving there, and that'll be a tough game for the uh, North Carolina Tar Heels that are uh, looking to get rolling early on. This is the game I pre- I have them penciled a loss in versus Auburn. Auburn's just a team that no one wants to play. It's a they're a tough physical football team with talent on talent at all positions, and you know it's going to be a tough game at a neutral site in Atlanta, Week Two for North Carolina. That's a game I really don't see them coming out winning. The Auburn returns an experienced quarterback at Bo Nix. I think that's a loss for them Week Two. Do not play Clemson, but they play at Virginia, a team that's been was pretty solid last year. Looks to. Uh, be improving with uh, the new coach that used to coach at uh, BYU. Is it what's his name? Bronco? Is it Bronco Mendenhall? Yeah, M- Mendenhall has got Virginia. Yeah, um, a solid program now at Miami. You know, Miami. Who knows how Miami will do this year? Um, do have the, some really talent on the defensive line: Gregory Rousseau, Quincy Rochier. But uh, yeah, at Miami, a uh, tough place to play. Uh, nonetheless, though, even uh, with Miami being up and down, but. I really like their chances in the in any AC game, ACC game this year. I think they're more talented than just about anyone in the ACC besides Clemson. So that's the thing to watch for. I think this could easily be a 9-10 win team. I don't think that's really out of the question at all. Um, I think they lose to Auburn, a stumble in an ACC game, maybe one more ACC game. So I think 9-10 and 10 is uh, realistic for this team. Could possibly do better than that. You never know, but... Nine ten wins is what I think. I think nine and three, nine and three is a very, uh, very fair assessment of this team. This is a team that, uh, even though they're nine and three, I think you'll still see that this is like greater improvement even than last year. All six losses coming by seven points or less last year, and but uh, I mean that you got to count for a lot of the wins were close. There were some cl- uh, very close wins they had too, which you have to account for as well. But I think that uh, usually teams that have a lot of close losses one year, the next year they'll come back and they'll usually win more of those games. And uh, my point being, I think they'll win two or three more of them. That's why I think nine and three is a very accurate assessment of the Tar Heels. 
But this is interesting because North Carolina, the way they're recruiting in the 2021 recruiting class, they're already ranked fourth, bringing in a very solid class. I think it's like 19th or 20th for 2020. This is potentially a team that to watch for that could uh, dethrone Clemson. You see that coach, there's not a lot of great coaches in the ACC. I, like I stayed at Mendenhall at Virginia, but Mac Brown, a guy that's proven, he's had almost this, not quite the success Sweeney had has had at Clemson now, a close to at Texas, but Mac Brown, an established um, coach that could really, uh, with the way he recruits, you know, has a potential to dethrone Clemson. That'll be something to watch for. Um, who's a team that can kind of be like that thorn in um, in Clemson in the years prior? But make uh, thanks for tuning in to Big Time Football Talk. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. Uh, more of the latest videos for the podcast. Until next time, peace.